In this video, we're going to talk about osteoporosis management, focusing on the pharmacology. Osteoporosis is where you have low bone mass with microarchitecture disruption and skeletal fragility. This results in a reduced bone strength and an increased risk of fracture. Osteoporosis is asymptomatic until a fracture occurs. Let's revise the physiology of bone breakdown and formation. Your bone building cells are osteoblasts, which respond to parathyroid hormone, a hormone secreted by the parathyroid glands. Parathyroid hormone binds to the parathyroid receptors on osteoblasts, the bone building cells. This causes osteoblasts to express rank ligand, which binds onto the rank um, on premature osteoclasts. This interaction activates the premature osteoclasts, which are the bone resorbing cells, the bone breaking cells. Osteoclasts excavate characteristic pits and trails on the bone by pumping acid to hydroxyapatite, the mineral component of bone. Osteoclasts also release other enzymes that do help degrade or break down bone. Osteoclast formation is regulated primarily by macrophage colony stimulating factor, MCSF, which promotes the differentiation of myeloid progenitors into promonocytes and then osteoclasts. It's also regulated by rank ligand that causes the differentiation and fusion of premature osteoclasts into osteoclasts. It's also regulated by a soluble inhibitor, osteoprotegerin, OPG. OPG, interestingly, basically binds to rank L, inhibiting the interaction between rank L and rank. Therefore, OPG prevents the activation of osteoclasts. Osteoclast formation is boosted strongly by hypoxia as well. An increase in osteoclastic activity means bone breakdown and this is termed bone resorption. An increased bone resorption means reduced bone mineral density. By the time it gets to a certain stage, the low bone mineral density is termed osteoporosis, characterized by a T-score less than negative 2.5. A T-score is a term used to describe how dense your bones are, usually measured at your spine or hip, a T-score less than negative 2.5 is diagnostic of osteoporosis. Many things can affect bone physiology and increase the risk of osteoporosis. For example, increasing age and female sex, mainly because of postmenopause, because estrogen actually normally increases OPG expression. So low estrogen, as in postmenopause, causes a low OPG. Hypogonadism or premature ovarian failure also contributes. Adrenal gland hyperplasia or long-term glucocorticoids uh, use increases osteoclastic activity and so increases risk of osteoporosis. A low body mass index, immobilization, space travel, basically being weightless, reduces osteoblastic activity. Other risks include uh, when you have a certain ethnic background. For example, white persons are at a higher risk than black persons. Rheumatoid arthritis and bone cancer increases inflammatory states around bone, which stimulates osteoclastic activity and so increases the risk of fractures. There's also smoking, alcohol abuse, vitamin D deficiency, as well as low calcium intake. So the prevention of osteoporosis is quite straightforward. Stop smoking, lower alcohol intake, make sure to have enough calcium and vitamin D, and there's also weight-bearing exercises which are recommended for most women with premenopausal osteoporosis. Interestingly, uh, there is no convincing evidence that high-intensity exercise such as running is of greater benefit than lower intensity exercise such as walking. 
Now, there are medications available to prevent and to treat osteoporosis. Medications to prevent osteoporosis are only for those at high risk of osteoporosis. This includes those taking high-dose steroids for a long duration. If someone has a fragility fracture, then usually they are started on medications for osteoporosis, even if they haven't met the diagnosis based on the T-score. Or if they are diagnosed with osteoporosis with a T-score less than negative 2.5. Let's take a look at the classes of medication used for managing osteoporosis. Bisphosphonates are one of the most important ones and they are anti-resorptive agents. Bisphosphonates work by binding to hydroxyapatite binding sites on the surface of bone tissue. Bisphosphonates components are then taken up by osteoclasts during the phases of bone resorption. And when this happens, it actually interferes with osteoclast function and promotes osteoclast uh, apoptosis, which causes them to die, and so you have reduced bone resorption. Bisphosphonates are the first-line treatment for osteoporosis in postmenopausal women and men over the age of 50. In glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis with moderate to high fracture risk, oral bisphosphonates are recommended as first-line therapy, regardless of age. The side effects of bisphosphonates include osteonecrosis of the jaw, which can happen at any time. There's also atypical uh, femoral fractures, which is associated with longer duration of use. Other side effects include hypocalcemia and hypophosphatemia musculoskeletal pain, atrial fibrillation, renal impairment. Oral bisphosphonates specifically can cause esophageal inflammation, as well as ocular inflammation and visual disturbances. Contraindications to use uh, bisphosphonates include uh, that of a poor renal function with an EGFR less than 30 to 35. Hypocalcemia, if you have an esophageal abnormality such as a stricture. There is also some relative contraindication uh, during the use in pregnancy as well as lactation period. Bisphosphonates come in two forms. There's oral bisphosphonates such as alindronate, resindronate, and then there's also the IV bisphosphonates such as uh, zoledronic acid. IV bisphosphonates are, you know, usually used for those who have malignancy and who have esophageal abnormalities. IV bisphosphonates specifically can cause flu-like symptoms, uh, usually within 24 to 72 hours after administration. Bisphosphonates should be taken uh, in the morning and evening, at least 30 minutes before meals, to prevent bisphosphonates from forming complexes with calcium. This is to prevent esophagitis. They should also be taken with plenty of water and an upright position should be maintained for at least 30 minutes following uh, the intake. Interestingly, a drug holiday period, which is basically being off bisphosphonates, can be considered if you've been taking bisphosphonates intravenously for three years or five years if you're taking oral bisphosphonates. Raloxifene is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, a SERM. Raloxifene inhibits bone resorption and reduces the risk of vertebral fractures as well as increases uh, bone density. It's quite common in postmenopausal women who have osteoporosis as it also reduces the risk of breast cancer. So if someone has a risk of breast cancer, you would consider using this. It's contraindicated in pre-menopausal women. In pre-menopausal women, uh, raloxifene would block estrogen action on bone and would actually cause a decrease in bone density and so increases the risk of osteoporosis. Another contraindication of raloxifene is venothromboembolism because the side effects of raloxifene is that it actually inhibits the uh, estrogen action. And so you get menopausal symptoms, hot flushes, leg cramps, and peripheral edema as well as an increase in thromboembolic events.
Another class of medications used to manage osteoporosis is uh, those that inhibit rank ligand. Denusabab is a fully human monoclonal antibody that specifically binds to rank ligand and blocks the binding of rank ligand to rank. Specifically binds to rank ligand and blocks the binding of rank ligand to rank, and thereby reduces the formation, the function, and the survival of osteoclasts, which results in a decrease uh, in bone resorption and an increase in bone density. The side effects of denusumab include hypocalcemia, back pain, pain in the extremity, hypercholesterolemia, musculoskeletal pain, as well as cystitis. There is an increased rate of cellulitis and bronchitis. Medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw and atypical femoral fracture have been reported with denusumab use as well. Denusumab is administered twice yearly, and it's a good alternative to bisphosphonates, especially if someone has renal failure. That is why you see all dialysis patients or those with renal failure on denusumab. Interestingly, if denusumab is discontinued, you have to administer an alternative therapy, typically bisphosphonate, and this is to prevent for, you know, rapid bone loss because there's an increased risk of vertebral fractures if you stop denusumab. Another class of medications used to treat osteoporosis is parathyroid hormone and parathyroid hormone-related protein analogs, which belong to, you know, actually completely different class of osteoporosis medications called anabolic agents because they actually really increase bone formation. Parathyroid hormone normally stimulates osteoblasts, uh, you know, and so stimulates bone formation, but also osteoclasts, which causes bone resorption. So it seems odd to use parathyroid hormone analogs or related peptides. However, intermittent administration of parathyroid hormone has been shown to stimulate bone formation more than bone resorption. Teriparatide is a parathyroid hormone analog. Abaloparatide is a parathyroid hormone related protein analog. Both agents stimulate bone formation and require daily subcutaneous injection. Treatment should be limited to two years. The side effects of the parathyroid hormone analogs include hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria. And so you get increased risk of renal stones. You also get an increased uh, serum uric acid, which means that there's an increased risk of gout. Another side effect is, you know, you're injecting yourself daily with this agent, which could be quite annoying. And because the treatment of these agents are limited to two years, it's important to transition to, a, uh, to an anti-resorptive agent to prevent the loss of the newly formed bone. Another class used to treat osteoporosis are the sclerostin inhibitors. There is a peptide called sclerostin. In the skeletal tissue, sclerostin is a protein secreted by osteoclasts to reduce bone formation by interfering with the proliferation and function of osteoblasts. Romososumab is a humanized monoclonal antibody that inhibits sclerostin. And so by inhibiting sclerostin, you're allowing the osteoblasts to build more bone and so increase bone density. So in summary, osteoporosis is where you have a low bone mineral density characterized by a T-score less than negative 2.5. It's important to address the risk factors and to encourage you know, stopping smoking, stopping alcohol intake, and some uh, exercises, especially if you're in the premenopausal state. The drug classes used for osteoporosis include bisphosphonates, the rank ligand inhibitors, as well as the parathyroid hormone analogs and the sclerostin inhibitors.